sucks. Stupid Range Rover. Oh man, stupid cars. What a fucking horrible morning. Holy shit. Car isn't starting because I left one of the doors open while painting it and now I have no fucking booster cables. One of these crap mornings, the mornings that you're excited to wake up to, however, they never go as planned. We got it. Nice. Finally. We will be moving all the cars into their spot. that is doing some some work in the uh, parking lot. Just some quick maintenance. Quick maintenance, <laughs> uh, doing an oil change. <laughs> yeah, it's oily. Is it? Yeah, I can feel it, it's oily. Did you need a rug or something? Oh, no, that was lucky. It's definitely leaking from the oil filter. Yeah? So it wasn't tight enough. It wasn't tight enough, so that explains why they were so damn tight. Yeah. <laughs> I took it off and I needed the big, big pliers. What's uh, what's in that box? Oh, GoPro stuff. It's my goodies. Cool. Yeah, we can head over. So you said that way? Yeah. Then, then take the highway from there.
folks, we are arriving shortly. I will try to film some of it while I'm there and show Turn you. Turn left onto Roger Stevens Drive, Ottawa Regional Road 6. Signs for Ottawa 6 Est, Promenade Roger Stevens Est. You'll hear it like, hear it. Yeah. yeah. So we're thinking that the diff is somehow locked in full 4x4 mode uh, since we reprogrammed the TCM. So if you go slow, like stop, turn the steering completely, and now go slowly. It's not locked? No. Okay, stop it. Let's see what it would sound like with when it's locked. Yeah, exactly. What I was saying earlier is that the, so, uh, it says that the that the the trans the diff is locked, but the transfer case is open. No, it's the it's the other way around. That's that's the diff. Uh, here, sorry, yeah, your diff is unlocked, but the transfer case is locked. Right. Okay, so now that I'm locked, let me just turn some. I do feel resistance. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm turning the wheels. And give it some. Give it. Give it good. Yeah, but I'm also on low gear. See now I hear. Okay, the so that's exactly now what it was doing. Yeah. Okay. So now let's go back to uh, regular driving mode. Put that on. Oops, neutral. Okay, so the clunk was your transfer case. We'll bring it back to this regular height. Release the pet the brake pedal. Yeah. Okay. Put it in drive. So I don't have that resistance at all anymore now. At all? Go, give it a bit. No. You would definitely feel it. So now turn uh, stop. Put it back to park. Turn off the car and listen. Release the brake. Yeah, I felt that so it clunk. locked it, right? It may have. Okay, so turn it back on. Now you're in normal settings. Yeah. Oh, yeah so no. let's put it back and let's try to do the full turn. Resistance? Yeah. No? A little bit, but I don't. Not like the four wheel lock. Yeah. You do have it. Yeah. So it's locking it as soon as you turn off the car. It's not fully, yeah. Why would it do that? I can, I can see that it's locked because this tire is actually skipping a bit. Yeah, I can hear the transfer case. They're locked at the back. So we're thinking that uh, from what Mark explained, that Transfer case is fine, it's engaging and disengaging like it should. The issue is with the diff itself that seems to be locked or was locked when it went to the shop. But when you put the TCM in, it would have been reset to regular driving uh, conditions, which is unlocked. Is there a way to make it lock and unlock when you just touch the screen? Well, let's try it out. <laughs> I saw that there was an unlock icon. So now it's unlocked? Yeah. And so is the transfer case also. I don't know. And now, now it's, it's locked. locked. Now it's unlocked. When you put it on park. 
target unlocks automatically. Yeah. So there's no way to force the unlock or force the lock. Doesn't look like it. Are those just icons telling you what mode you're in? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. You said it's touch screen. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Step one, you realize your diff lock does not work. You begin swearing, yelling, pulling, kicking, shouting, and generally being quite rude. <laughs> Step one, complete. You go home and say, I'll do it tomorrow. Definitely complete. Yep. You can see that it's seized. That's not impossible. It's not impossible. But here it says that it's unlocked when it's locked. Right, but it's unlocked because the computer says, yes, I unlocked it. Right. Is it physically unlocked? No, it's not. Suspension, car, descent assist off, we are leveled, high, no selection. If ever I would turn, it would, it would, hop. It would hop, like hop hard. Like right now, if I do this, it should skip. And it, it didn't, it didn't, it, there is some restriction so it's not disengaging fully i don't know there is some restriction not as much as there was previously but but i i definitely do think that something has changed like it's better it's better than it was so that's why i'm saying i'm thinking the actuator might be seizing where it's not retracting all the way and it's still partially locking at the back Either at the back or in the transfer case. I'm telling you that that knock, when you turn it off, comes from the middle underneath. Right. That's the transfer case. So why was why was the front skipping? Why was the entire front hopping like the front is fully locked? And now it's no longer doing that. Because when your old TCM was... Oh, I don't know. Either it tried to lock it and un unlock it when you put it on low. Remember when your TCM was bad, it, it was stuck on low. Yeah. Right? So does that low setting mean that it automatically locks the, the wheels? Mm, probably because you need to put it in neutral. So then we've cycled it a couple of times, so now it's it's better. It doesn't feel horrible. I wish I didn't live on a highway. <laughs> so it feels looser, the front. Yeah. The front, yeah, slightly looser, definitely better. So I'm suspecting that transfer case actuated. Turn off the car. Uh, it's the transfer case that does that. So it releases. Yeah. That's that definitely that clonk definitely comes from the transfer case. Yeah. From the transfer case, right? Yep. So I'm thinking that your motor might be a little bit tired. Um, this guy's taking one off of an uh, LR3. I think it's pretty much the same. We're live. <laughs> All right, thank you. Somehow I, I always end up under these things. Okay. Hey, it's lifted just for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's the rear diff there. I'm trying to see if there's some lock actuator that I can spot. Not seeing anything electrical at all back here. So there's got to be something, or else the truck wouldn't know whether the diff is locked or not. So maybe from these images, I might be able to see something. Right. You can go also from the side. It's not bad from here, honestly. Yeah. I do see a wire that looks like it's on top. Way on top. We 
which is no good. Okay, go look at the back. Do you see the actuator? No, I don't. That's why I'm saying I suspect it might be at the top of the diff. Or it's further back there. Well, I can't see much from under here. Uh, maybe the camera will show more because I can get into spots that, well, my big head won't fit in. So, there you go. Boy, what a day, to be honest, today. So, woke up, as I explained earlier, with a whole bunch of messy situations to get the car started and all of that. Then we get into more issues with the Range Rover, surprisingly. It caused no problems for a full year, and now with the TCM that probably it seems like all of these things are popping up. I will not yet say that Range Rover is a piece of crap truck. Uh, I'll still give it a shot because it's been a year that we, just over a year that we've owned it, haven't had that many problems with it. But as you guys can see, a whole bunch of problems with the diff being locked at the back right now which is a problem because the car is kind of skipping on the road. I don't want to run it that way because if ever I do, my custom problems to the diff, I'll have to change up the entire diff, which is about probably a $1,500 to $2,000 job if Mark and I do it ourselves. Probably like a $5,000 job if I get it done at a garage. So what Mark and I talked about uh, before he left is that there's going to be a few things that I'll have to try to do tomorrow. First of all, I will drain the oil from the rear diff. We'll take a look if there's some metal shavings in there. If we have metal shavings, the diff will have to be replaced regardless what the problem is. If ever there are no shavings in the rear diff, that's good. I will put some fresh oil, even though the oil was changed in there like 2,000 kilometers ago or even like 1,000 kilometers ago. And it's good for, I think, like a good 60 to 80,000 kilometers. You know what? I'll still change it. We will check the oil. We will check to see if there's some metal shavings. If there are no metal shavings, we will probably start diagnosing the actuator. So what the actuator does is that with the positive, uh, with the positive, it, it spins kind of little key into the diff and it engages the two, the two real axles. It makes sure that they're both tied together, hence why it's skipping because one tire cannot move faster than the other one. Hopefully we're gonna be able to access the actuator because as Mark saw earlier, he can't see it from underneath. It's probably at the top and I don't know how we access the actuator at the top. Maybe there's a trap from the inside of the truck, which I haven't looked at yet. Hopefully there is one. If there's none, sometimes you have to pull like the full back end. Uh, you have to pull the full back end down in order to access some of these parts. It would be quite silly, but I'm not surprised, I wouldn't be surprised with some of the car engineering that we see. So anyways, there's going to be more coming up. We will be trying to diagnose some of this. The car does not skip as much as it did previously because I guess that the front disengaged but the back is still fully engaged. Tomorrow I'll be doing the oil, I will be checking for the metal shavings and hopefully we're going to be able to research a bit more from there. So Subaru is gone, driver only has three cars. Mark and I will be checking to hopefully buy another car so that we can fix it all up and hopefully resell it afterwards or make it a fun car. We're not necessarily sure yet. We stopped at Princess Auto today. We got some cool tools for, for our toolboxes. So I think that we're both quite stoked about that. And uh, yeah, so this is it guys. The, this is the end of the video. I have nothing else to say. I am, I, I'm done for today. I think that I think that today I'll just go like probably lay down for a few minutes, a few hours and not wake up until, I don't know, tomorrow. <laughs>